Hello, I'm Vikan Baskert, Professor of Medicine from Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, Texas. Welcome to the AHA 2021 Science News video. Today, I'm joined by Professor Adrian Wors from University of Groningen in Netherlands, who will provide us an overview of the results of the highly awaited EMPALS trial, empagliflozin in patients hospitalized for acute heart failure, being presented at the late breaking sessions during the AHA Scientific Sessions 2021. Adrian, congratulations on this very important trial. Can you tell us about first the study population methodology and what were the major findings? Yes, thank you. Um, EMPULSE is a randomized placebo-controlled trial that aimed to investigate both the efficacy and the safety of empagliflozin, the STLT2 inhibitor in patients hospitalized for acute heart failure irrespective of whether they had type 2 diabetes or not, or irrespective of whether they had heart failure with reduced or preserved ejection fraction. Now, we randomized 530 patients hospitalized for acute heart failure after stabilization between one to four days after hospital admission. Uh, we randomized them to 10 milligrams of empagliflozin or placebo and treated them for 90 days. Now, the primary endpoint was a hierarchical composite of death, uh, heart failure events, and change from baseline in KCCQ total symptom score after 90 days uh, of treatment. Now, the major finding of the study was that after the 90 days of treatment, patients treated with empagliflozin were 36% more likely to experience a clinical benefit compared with patients on placebo. So that was the primary endpoint with a p-value of 0.0054. Now, what does this mean if we translate this to the individual uh, components of the primary endpoint? We saw that there was a 35% reduction in death or a heart failure event with a p-value of 0.04 and a 4.5 points greater improvement in the KCCQ total symptom score at 90 days with a p-value of 0.03. In addition, we saw a greater reduction in uh, body weight and a greater reduction in uh, anti-pro-BMP. And uh, we didn't see any safety concern. It was very benign safety profile. So this is a, the summary of the trial. Thank you, Adrian. Can you put this study in the context of all other SGLT2 inhibitor studies? Uh, wh what is the importance of impulse uh, in the continuum of the care? And also maybe uh, provide us some insights into were there any differences amongst patients with heart failure with preserved EF and reduced EF and or patients with or without diabetes? Yeah. So, um... Impulse could be considered as the, the, the missing link. Uh, as you pointed out, we have seen in the last two years beneficial effects of SGLT2 inhibitors in patients with chronic heart failure, both with preserved and reduced ejection fraction, so emperor preserved, emperor reduced, and DAPA-HF. And then we had Soloist, that was a semi-acute heart failure trial, but that was only performed in patients with diabetes. So EMPULSE is important since it is the first study showing beneficial effects on clinical outcomes of an SGLT2 inhibitor in patients hospitalized for acute heart failure, irrespective of whether they had diabetes, irrespective of ejection fraction, and important as well, irrespective of whether they had de novo acute heart failure or decompensated uh, chronic heart failure. Now, to your second question, um, if you look at the subgroup analysis, and interestingly, the, the beneficial effects of empagliflozin were very similar in patients with or without diabetes, were very similar in patients with HFPEF versus HFREF, and were very similar in patients with both de novo acute heart failure versus decompensated chronic heart failure. Thank you. This comes as a question from the clinicians repeatedly. How early were the beneficial findings noted? And given the context of weight loss and BNP reduction, can you comment on potential mechanisms? Yes, this is a very difficult question. The first one is maybe easier. So with the win ratio, we couldn't really, we didn't do the traditional time to event analysis. So it's difficult to say that it was in the first days or after 
10 days. The only thing I can say, this was an only a 90 day study, so a very short study. And within this short vulnerable phase during hospitalization and early after discharge, we already found within the 90 days a significant improvement in deaths, heart failure events, and improvement in quality of life. Now concerning the mechanism, um, yeah, we can only speculate. And there have been, as you know, multiple mechanisms have been proposed uh, in order to explain the beneficial effects of SGLT2 inhibitors, especially in chronic heart failure. If we look at this population, it is uh, of hospitalized heart failure patients. Uh, it's particularly of interest that we saw a reduction in body weight, a statistically significant uh, reduction in body weight. We saw improved diuretic response in the empagliflozin treated group. Uh, we saw an improvement in clinical signs and symptoms of congestion, and we saw a reduction in anti -pro BMP. So if we take this together, I think these findings suggest that the results may at least be partly explained by the decongestives and the diuretic effects of empagliflozin. Thank you, Adrian. Impulse trial provides us the last link in this exciting journey with HGLT2 inhibitors in heart failure, supporting the safety and efficacy of initiation in patients hospitalized with heart failure, regardless of ejection fraction and regardless of diabetes. We would like to thank Professor Wars and the trial investigators for their important work and our attendees for joining us. Thank you.